One of the greatest teachers in life is life itself. And so from my experience, I've learned about a shit ton of products and things that I would never put on my face again. Like never, ever, ever, ever. And so I brought you a bag of goodies. <laughs> And so we're going to talk about some of these things and why I think you shouldn't put them on your face either. Okay, so let's see what's in this bag. I'm not peeking. I'm not looking. So the first thing is Too Faced. Yes, I don't even know how we got here, but I used to use Too Faced as a spot treatment. And essentially the whole thing or the whole idea behind it is that Too Faced has drying ingredients in it. And so if you put it on like a pimple, you're going to dry out that pimple because it has things like alcohol and, you know, hydrogen peroxide and baking soda, things that are commonly known to be drying. But um, there is some reasons why you just should not put Too Faced on your face. And so one, Too Faced is made for your teeth and not your face, that's one. And two, like it can over dry your skin, causing irritation and also making your acne or whatever you're trying to solve more inflamed. And so this is on my don't do it list. It's on my no list. I would put it back in the bag, but actually I should grab that because that's good Too Faced. Okay, so we're back in the bag and getting in our bag. And so, but this is the bag of no's and I have oil. So yeah, I am not a fan of oil. Um, so this is onion seed oil, but I'm talking about any oils. I used to use olive oil and all types of coconut oil on my face. I don't know who told me that that was okay, but it is a no. Um, the comedogenic rating of coconut oil is about a four. And so people who are acne prone, uh, I just would advise to stay away from coconut oil. But honestly, I think the whole comedogenic rating is a little rigged. Um, and so we're gonna talk about that when I pull out the next ingredient because yeah, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not believing it. And so if you're acne prone and you're looking for a moisturizer, I always say the safest route is the oil-free route because you just wanna make sure you're not using ingredients that will either aggravate your acne or clog your pores. And I just, for some reason, oil just does not work for me. So oil is in my bag of no's and I know it is a unpopular opinion, but it's my opinion, so it is what it is. The next ingredient, which is my segue, we're gonna put this to the side, um, is products that have shea butter in it. I am not feeling shea butter, y'all. Like, I, you know, I always wanted to be like shea butter baby, but it's just shea butter baby not happening. Shea butter has a comedogenic rating of two, but again, I think the shea butter guys, like, they kind of finesse something to get a rating that low. If you look into how the comedogenic rating came about, it was done in the 1970s and essentially they got a bunny's ear and they rubbed ingredients on it and if they saw any type of irritation or whatever they were looking for that's how they determined what the rating was for these ingredients on the comedogenic scale last time i checked but i ain't no bunny and so we need an upgraded system i think a lot of it is just outdated and i think a lot of the things that have been deemed safe are just not safe and so i just avoid them period and so my biggest thing with shea butter is that if you have fungal acne it triggers fungal acne and so it is just one of the things that is a no if you're like what the fuck is fungal acne i talk about that in my video talking about fungal acne aka malassezia folliculitis so go check that out but yeah i'm like mm -mm, it's not happening it's not going on this face okay so the next thing in my bag of goodies is St. Ives Apricot, I don't even know what to say. St. Ives Apricot Scrub is just like a no, it's a no. And so my biggest issue with it is that one is a physical exfoliator. I was using this bad boy for almost 10 years 
every single day and I just don't know why. I mean, I guess because it was in the house, my mama brought it and you know, I didn't know better, but this is just a no. One, you should never be exfoliating every single day. That's one. And two, with physical exfoliators, they basically create micro tears in your skin that can lead to irritation and also hyperpigmentation. So I say put this away, just throw it to the side. Take it out of your routine. Um, all, and this goes for all physical exfoliants. Like just, no, we're not doing that anymore, okay? Stick with chemical. And let's see what else is in the bag. And so I have DIY treatments. Yes, I used to be a fan of the DIY. I was so like, if it's not natural, I'm not using it. If I can't pronounce the ingredients, it's not going on my face. Everything needs to be natural. And I am so happy that I got out of this phase because honestly, for me, natural shit is just not working. It's just, it's not, it's not. And there's more effective ingredients and products that you can use uh, that will give you the results that you want. And so I'm just sticking to what works versus the whole natural craze. Like do not fall into like the fear mongering of all natural. It's just not worth it. And so, yeah, I am so like not doing DIYs. My end of why I was just like, I got it stop with the DIY. I created a cinnamon honey olive oil mask. And when I tell you, I put that shit on my face and my face almost burned off. I could not, I think the recipe required you to keep it on your face for about 15 minutes. I could not last 15 minutes. It was just like, my face was burning off as, and is. It's traumatizing just thinking about it. My face literally was burning off. So yeah, I'm not, I'm just no DIY. And so those are some of the things that I put on my face that I will never put on my face ever again. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. We're giving you all types of things, melanin and skincare over here. Okay. And yeah, that is it. Bye.